Welcome back to Rogan Recaps. My guest today is the criminally underrated crime thriller from 2005, Revolver. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm dropping the spoiler alert. This movie's world class, folks. So we got this Cockney wise guy, Jake Green. He's been cooling his heels in the slammer for seven long years. Two years down the line, he and his bro, Billy, they head to this high stakes casino run by this crime boss, Dorothy Macha. Macha owes Jake serious money. Paul's telling him to chill, knowing these guys are no joke. Flashback to 10 minutes ago, Jake hesitates to take the elevator because of his claustrophobia. Man's been in a box for the last seven years. Eventually, he gives in, and here we are, back at the table. Jake's playing it smart, throws a bet on a chip toss, loses intentionally. When he makes the same bet with Macha, boom, he hits the jackpot. They're making a beeline for the exit when this guy, Zach, corners them. He's all like, you guys are in deep shit, but I can help you out, and hands Jake a card. Jake, not wanting to face the elevator again, takes the stairs, but then he just keels over, passed out cold. The card says, take the elevator. Meanwhile, Macha, he's breaking a sweat. He's like a fighter getting outplayed, realizing Jake's gunning for big time revenge, right? Something about a beef from seven years back involving his sister-in-law. They plan to hire an assassin. At the hospital, doctors can't figure out what's wrong with Jake. They tell him to kick back and wait for the blood results. Later, they roll up to Jake's place and bam, they're all getting shot at. Jake's only saved because he bends down to pick up a card he finds on the floor. Tries to get away, but his driver gets hit too. And walks Zach, the guy from the casino, like a corner man rushing into the octagon to save his fighter. So this hitman, Sorter, he can't believe he missed Jake. This guy is the top assassin, never misses. But when he's got Macha breathing down his neck, all he says is he had a bad feeling. Zach whisks Jake off to meet his buddy Avi, and these guys have somehow got Jake's medical file. They drop this bomb on him. He's got this rare blood disease. He's got like three days to live. They give him a deal, protection in exchange for all his money and unquestioning obedience. Jake's not buying it, thinks they're running a con on him, but then his private doctor confirms it. He's on borrowed time. He pulls a gun on his doc just to make sure he's not in on it. But at the end of his rope, Jake accepts the deal. As they roll out, Avi breaks it down. They're loan sharks, and Jake's money is what they're gonna loan out. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Jake starts unraveling his history with Macha. He used to be a card man for his group called the Three Eddies. They threatened Jake's brother Billy and his family, so he had no choice. But things got heated at the table. Insults flew about Jake's mom, and Jake wasn't having it. He started a gunfight, the power goes off, cash vanishes, and suddenly Jake's name is in the mix. Next thing he knows, he's face to face with the police. To keep him silent, they threaten his niece and in a tragic turn of events, they accidentally kill his sister-in-law when she tries to shield her daughter. Jake keeps quiet about Macha being the mastermind behind the games and he gets slapped with a seven year prison sentence. On the other side of the story, Macha and his right hand man, Paul, they pay a visit to Sam Gold. Now Gold, he's the big fish in this pond. But here's the thing about Gold, the guy doesn't entertain visitors. So instead, they get to meet his advisor, Lily Walker. She's down to broker a power deal with Macha. She reminds Macha, though, Gold is not a fan of the limelight, and he's not one to hand out second chances. Later, while Jake is playing a game of chess with Avi, he gets asked about his time in prison. Jake had a tough choice to make when he was sentenced. 14 years of regular time, or 7 years in solitary. He chose solitary. His cell. It's sandwiched between two old timers, a chess master and a con man. And even though these guys never spoke to each other, they seem to know everything about one another. This trio, they'd communicate by leaving messages written in library books. And that's how Jake learned their formula to win any game in the world. Now these two guys, they were cooking up a plan to break out of prison and they promised to take Jake with them. But when the day came, they ghosted Jake just up and left without a single word. Jake gets out two years later and he gets hit with this bombshell. The two guys swiped all his cash. All that's left is a note that says you can only get smarter by playing a smarter opponent. I mean, talk about a hard pill to swallow, right? But he has their formula. 
And guess what? He's making himself a fortune. Back in the present, Jake keeps doing what he's told, visiting clients, distributing his own money. Now, the guy's supposed to put the pressure on these folks to force them to pay up. But Jake, he can't bring himself to rough up innocent, desperate people. Meanwhile, Avi and Zach, they're up to some hardcore stuff. They're rigging a truck to bust open a wall to steal a safe. The safe has this powder that Macha promised to Lily. When Macha realizes he's been ripped off, he's pissed. He tells Paul to get this sorted no matter the cost. Paul goes to see Lord John, the triad kingpin. John agrees to provide the powder at a really steep price. Mm -hmm. So Jake, Zach, Avi, and their crew, they've got a plan. They go to this hotel where the exchange is supposed to happen. They sneak into a room next to the thugs, drill a hole in the wall, and pump in sleeping gas. Knocks out everyone. They steal the money and the powder and make it look like Macha robbed John and vice versa. Jake then gets a call from Billy. He's been asking around and finds out that Zack and Avi are real bad news. Even Sam Gold wouldn't mess with them. Billy tells Jake to get the hell out of there, but Jake doesn't listen. Goes back to his job, where he's supposed to shoot this scared client. But Jake, he can't do it. Tries to shoot Avi instead, but realizes the gun is empty just before Avi clocks him. Jake wakes up hours later in some motel. Gets a call from Avi, tells him he's survived his third day. Whatever that means. Jake goes to see his doctor, finds out his diagnosis was wrong. He's not sick after all. Tries to confront Avi about it, but he's playing coy. Meanwhile, Paul's been doing some digging, and Jake's name keeps popping up. Macha puts two and two together, decides Jake needs to be taken care of, sends his goons after him. When Jake gets back to the motel, Avi and Zach warn him that Macha's guys are waiting for him. So Jake, he's got to get the hell out of there. Makes a run for it, manages to shake off the goons, and one even shoots himself accidentally. The rest of the goons find the body and think Jake did it. Jake confronts Avi and Zach in their office, and they confess they've always known Jake hadn't been fully truthful about his past with the Eddies. They had been waiting for Jake when he got out of prison to kill him since what he did caused them to get fired by Macha. Jake offered them a deal to keep his skin intact. He'd give them 3% of any cash they loaned him every month. First time around, only one Eddie is willing to take the gamble. But when they see Jake isn't blowing smoke, they all want in upping the ante to 4%. The catch. Jake's just shuffling the Eddie's own money around. He's not out a single cent. It gets to the point where they've got nothing left to lend. So they hit up Macha. Macha smells something's up with the Eddie's mysterious money man. Jake, meanwhile, is playing high stakes with his formula, raking in the dough. Decides it's time to chill with his bro and niece. And that's when Macha takes out the Eddie's over their debt. Macha's enjoying a fancy meal when his goons roll in with news that Jake's flown the coop. That assassin from earlier spots John's late he loved playing waitress. He takes a shot at her before chasing after her driver. But his aim is shaky. He wounds her but doesn't take her out. As she's dying, she lands a shot, blows off one of Macha's fingers in the chaos. Afterwards, sort of gets the call to take out Lord John and his crew. Back to Jake. He's shooting the breeze with Zack and Avi while they're smacking golf balls off a rooftop. They drop this bombshell on him. This dude, Gold, he doesn't exist. He's just an embodiment of ego, a figurehead of greed. The guy's only got power because people buy into his image. What Jake needs to do is shake things up, change the narrative on what he lets call the shots in his life. After getting his head around this, Jake withdraws the rest of his cash from the bank and donates it all. He then infiltrates Macha's private quarters. Jake owns up to Macha. He admits he swindled him, acknowledges him as the top dog in the crime world, and lets him know about the donation made in his name. And with that, he's out. Next, Jake tackles his fears head on. He steps into an elevator, which gets jammed on the 13th floor. Caught in the grips of a panic attack, he battles his ego in a mental standoff and comes out the other side, a free man, unplugged from the game. Once the elevator comes back to life, Jake hits the ground floor, only to find Macha waiting for him, gun in hand, ego spiraling out of control. But Jake, he's cool as a cucumber, walks right past Macha. Macha can't comprehend this. 
Jesus. The idea of not being feared drives him bananas. He's left in tears, truly humbled by his own humiliation. The next morning, Macha gets a delivery from Paul, all the local papers, front pages screaming Macha's name, the supposed charitable casino owner. Macha laps up the praise, but it's a fleeting high. Paul drops another bombshell. Jake's got the goods, and he's been playing Macha the whole time. Paul Sorter and the rest of uh, Macha's squad drop by Billy's place. Billy manages to stash his daughter in a cupboard when he spots a traitor in his ranks. But once they find him, they start laying into him, pressing him for info on Jake and the goods. As the interrogation intensifies, Sorter's discomfort escalates, especially when they drag the terrified girl from the cupboard unable to stomach harming a child, sort of turns and takes out his fellow henchmen with brutal efficiency. But he slips up at the end and bites the bullet himself. Meanwhile, Macha gets a visit from Lily. She's got a wreath from Gold, who isn't thrilled about Macha's sudden media exposure. Lily drops the news that Macha's time is up. This sends Macha spiraling into panic yet again. Avi and Zack escort Jake and the goods to Macha's casino, where Avi finally one-ups Jake in a chess match and spills the beans. Turns out they were the guys in the cells next to Jake's. They wanted to bring him in, but Jake wasn't ready to face the truth, that they're just figments of his imagination. Checkmate. But there's no time for Jake to process this because the casino's heavy hitters come to escort him to Macha, who's got the girl with him. Jake spills the bags of powder on the floor and assures his niece that everything's gonna be okay. Macha's blood boils as Jake remains unfazed, even with a gun pointed at a child, humiliated and ego bruised. Macha comes to a desperate conclusion, Jake can't touch a dead man. And with that, he puts the gun to his head and pulls the trigger. Let us know what you think. Were Zach and Avi really just figments of Jake's imagination?